Hello, welcome to another full suit edition video because you're not my real mum and you can't tell me what to do. This bottle episode, I'm going to talk about public fursuiting. Public fursuiting is an absolutely amazing thing that I highly recommend all fursuiters do at least once. But to ensure you have the best time possible, you want to make sure you're going the best way about it. But why is public suiting so awesome? Well, it is so fun to interact with the general public who aren't used to furries. Like, you got people coming up and taking photos with you, and you got all the kids that are eager to play with you. You can get some um, really good suit photos in all kinds of crazy locations, some really nice scenic fursuit walks. There's just so much you can do, and it is so much fun. Even if you're just running around being dorks, public suiting is always a really good time. Especially if you don't have any uh, big cons or events nearby or coming up, public suiting is a great way to get your first suiting fix. And don't forget, you absolutely must, 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 must have a fursuit handler or multiple fursuit handlers if you have multiple fursuiters if you are going public fursuiting. If you want to know more about uh, fursuit handlers, that is an entire video in itself. So please go watch that one. <laughs> but yeah, you absolutely do need handlers. So the most obvious thing you have to consider before going public suiting is where are you going to go? And you can't just pick anywhere and go because sometimes the places you pick won't allow fursuiting for a multitude of different reasons. Some like entire locations have anti-mask laws which means you cannot cover your face in a public space. Uh, I think New York is pretty stingy with that. But uh, please, 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 please double check the anti-mask laws of your location. And also keep in mind, I've never been suiting outside of Australia before, so uh, I'm gathering all my experiences from that. So things might be a little different depending on where you are, so please, please, please do your research and double check everything. Again, with the uh, anti-mask stuff, uh, shopping centres and other private shops and businesses will very much be enforcing that, so please keep that in mind. I have seen fursuiters get kicked out of malls because they decided to put their heads on in a food court or something, so be careful. You have to try and like uh, see if you can contact the uh, mall security or like the mall's coordinators or someone pretty high up if you really want to go fursuiting in a mall, but I still wouldn't recommend it. You don't get much airflow in there. There's too many people. I, I wouldn't fursuit in a mall. Good place for a meet. Not a good place for for fursuits. Uh, I've done how many videos now and I still can't talk? Now you've probably seen a lot of fursuiters do stuff like bowling, ice skating, laser tag. Uh, that stuff all falls under private businesses, which you will need to ring up or email or go in in person and check if they're gonna allow fursuiters. You should be all right, but sometimes they'll still say no. Like for example, uh, bowling places might say no because the date you've picked might also be a day they're having like a super serious bowling tournament and they don't exactly want their hardcore veteran bowlers to be distracted by these giant stupid fluffy animals. Or places like uh, the indoor trampoline places, uh, they'll sometimes say no because they just don't deem it safe and they don't really want to have to deal with that kind of liability. So a good way to ask is just be like, hey, we're a group of people, we like to wear full on mascot suits as a hobby, is it alright if we bring some of these full mascot suits to your establishment? And if you're sending them an email, like maybe email them a picture, or if you're in person, show them a picture of a fursuit on your phone just so they know what they're dealing with. And some places will have like party rooms or function rooms, and you can ask if you can use those to get changed and like leave your stuff in. Uh, you might have to hire them, but if your group's big enough and you're gonna be bringing them enough money, they might let you use it for free. But outside of malls and businesses and cities, you have parks, which are probably my favorite place to go fursuiting. You know, you've got all the walking trails, you've got the playgrounds, uh, the public barbecues, beaches, all those awesome public places you can just go and hang out. Now, for most of these places, you shouldn't have to get permission. Uh, I, I take that with a grain of salt. Uh, I've never had to get permission to go suiting in a park, but again, could be different depending on where you live. Just don't do anything that annoys the public so that they have to ring someone and complain because that'll usually get you kicked out. And uh, if you have like a huge con-sized group, then I would get in touch with the, uh, that city council and ask about it because uh, one year at Ferdu when we all went to the beach to get a photo shoot, uh, we actually got kicked off because our group was too big. And apparently when you have a group over a certain number of people, you have to book. So. Uh, yeah, but for small groups and me's you should be okay. One extra thing you need to consider is where are you going to get changed and where are you going to take your head off to take a break. Public is the main place you kind of want to avoid breaking the magic because uh, a great way to make kids cry is for the awesome fluffy perfect animal friend he was just playing with to uh, decapitate himself. So you want to find a secluded place that you can suit up and down 
or just take your head off to breathe. Uh, most people will do these at their cars, but if you're like me and you don't have a car, then you need to find an alternative. What I'll do is I'll usually find like a nice big shady tree that's just out of the way somewhere and just suit up and down there. Uh, you don't want to use public toilets. <laughs> Please don't use public toilets to get changed with your fursuit. Um, Cause well one, they are super gross. And two, they're usually quite tiny. You don't have a lot of room to change it to giant animal costumes. So yeah, I'll usually just wear my Under Armour under my normal clothes to the meet and then just put my suit on behind a tree. And then when I'm done, go back behind the tree, take the suit off and then go in the public toilets without my suit to change out of my Under Armour. Now, as for interacting with the public themselves, uh, keep in mind, if your suit is scary, intentional or not, uh, the public will be a little less inclined to interact with you. I found this is mostly the case with uh, realistic suits. While yes, they look amazing, they are terrifying to small children. Like, I mean, really any fursuit can be terrifying to children. Like, I've made a lot of children cry, I won't lie. But I have definitely noticed it is more the case with realistic suits. Like, I have no doubt you're still gonna have lots of people to play with and interact with, but just keep that in mind. Same, I've also noticed that the public is more accepting towards full suits as well. I'm not sure why, but it's not a huge difference, but it's a big enough difference for me to notice, so I don't know. It's just interesting seeing how the public reacts to uh, each different kind of suit. But that doesn't mean if you have like a partial realistic suit that you just give up on all your public suiting dreams. Please still go public suiting. Just keep all that stuff in mind, alright? Don't be disappointed if more kids are scared of you than they are of the big toony ones. But now that you're with the public, how should you interact with the public? Well, the first thing you need to consider is should you interact with that particular member of the public? If they're not looking at you, if they're walking away, if they're crying, not approaching you, the mother is tugging them away, or they're clearly drunk, then maybe don't interact with them. Uh, if you're having trouble reading someone, uh, ask one of your nearby handlers. They should be able to tell a bit better for you. And they'll be like, yep, that person seems pretty interested. Go on, go over, hello, wave at them. Or they'll be like, no, 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 no. That person wants to rip your ears off. Please go the other way. But if they're walking towards you and they're smiling, then you can interact with them. If they're a child, it's a really good idea to squat down and get on their literal level because that way you're a lot less scary. They can come up and give you hugs, like you put your hand up and you do high fives, that's always fun. If anyone tries to get you to hold their child, whether it's an infant, a toddler, or a 40 year old grown man, um, do not take the child under any circumstances, no matter how confident or dexterous you think you are in your fursuit, do not take the child. You gotta remember all your senses are impaired, you can't see as well, you can't feel anything as well as you normally can, and you are at very high risk of dropping that child. And if you drop that child, that is a whole new world of mess. So it is just not worth the risk, no matter how insistent this crazy mother is being. Also, don't touch anyone who isn't consenting or approaching you, alright? If you want a hug, open your arms up for a hug. If you want a high five, lift your hand up and hopefully they'll come towards you and take a hug or they'll come towards you and take a high five. If they've come around to pose for a photo with you and they've put like their arm full on around you, maybe you can put like your paw on their head because they still touched you first, so you can touch them back. So always let people approach you first, let people touch you first. The approaching part is definitely more so the case with kids. Uh, even if they look really, really excited and they really, really want to like get close to you, let them come to you because if you start walking up to them or running up to them, they will poop themselves, like, you gotta remember, you are a lot taller than these kids, so you are absolutely terrifying. If you get into serious trouble, so you're feeling sick, you're hurt, or someone is harassing you constantly, take the head off. Safety is more important than magic, and it's really hard to get vomit smell out of the head. When you're getting harassed, so like someone's being super rough, or really inappropriate, and they're just going too far, making you really uncomfortable or even physically hurting you, uh, well for one, if you have a very competent handler, they should be able to step in and stop that, but if your handler is a stupid, you need to take your head off. People forget you're a person, alright? I know that sounds really hard to believe, but when people can't see your face, they don't emphasize with you as well as they normally would, so they just see you as a giant fluffy plaything, and they're more inclined to mess around with you. And it can really shock them back to their senses when you take their head off, and they see your real face and like, oh, 
Oh yeah, that's a, that's a person. That wasn't just a big fluffy toy I was playing with. Ah, uh, whoops. If it's still not working, back away, group back up, strength in numbers. And if that's still not working, then it's time to call the cops. But yeah, that's uh, really all there is to know. Uh, another good idea is to put your full suit on at home and just practice like some photo poses because you will forget how to pose as soon as someone shoves a camera in your face. So hey, can I take a photo? Yes. So do your research, behave yourself, have a handler, be safe, and go have some fun. If you have any public first sitting related questions, uh, please do leave them for me in the comments below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, public fursuiting is a pretty big topic, so although I have forgotten something, so please do leave me some questions if there is anything you're unsure about. Alright, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!